Hello everybody, in this video we're going to look at building networks with a walkthrough of code.org's Unit 2, Section 2. Alright, let's get going. If you're just looking for questions, please skip ahead to 431. So you might remember we watched this video. How to build a communication system that might actually survive a nuclear attack. So, the internet needs to survive a nuclear attack. That is, the internet needs to be fault tolerant and redundant. And these are some vocab terms that you'll need to know for the APCSB exam. Now we're looking at code.org's first challenge. That challenge is to create a computer network where everyone can speak with everyone else. And on this diagram, all of these are computing devices. Computing devices are just computers. We're going to connect the computing devices so that we can go from point one to point two through different paths. And this entire thing together is a computer network. These are definitions that you'll need to know for the APCSP exam. So if I do this challenge, you'll see I need 10 connections to connect every computing device directly to every other computing device. That's with five computing devices. And with six, you'll see I need 15 connections. And there's a formula that I can use to calculate how many connections I need. It's right here. It's the combination formula. And hopefully you can see that as I get to many, 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 many computing devices, like 10,000, this number gets really high. Each of these connections is going to represent wiring. Hopefully you can see it's a lot of wiring that I would have to do if I wanted to connect every device to every other device. And now we move to challenge two, which is to create a computer network with the fewest connection. And why do we care? Because these connections cost money. Remember, each connection is representing an Ethernet cable. So if I do this for five computing devices, you'll see I need not five connections, but four connections. I don't actually need that last one. Five can reach one by going through four, three, and two. So the path it takes is five, four, three, two, one. And with six computing devices, it's kind of the same concept. I'll need five connections. But there's a problem with building networks this way, and that is that they are not fault tolerant or redundant. We know that construction accidents can happen. We know that sharks can bite cables that are underwater. And we know about the historical event in 1954 when Tokyo was attacked. And we need our network to keep working even when these things happen. So this brings us to challenge three, which is to create a computer network that keeps working even if one connection is cut. So we still need a path between different devices. So basically we need alternate paths between different devices. So if I'm trying to go from one to two and my connection between one and two is cut, I still have a path to two, an alternate path, a slower path, but still a path by going five, four, three, then two. And the concept with six computing devices is more or less the same. That brings us to the last challenge, which is to create a computer network that keeps on working even if connections are cut, remembering that connections cost money. And we have a new thing here, which is that direct is going to be faster. So this combines everything we did before plus one. So there's no one right solution here. A solution for five might look like this. A solution for six might look like this. As long as you're balancing these three things, you're good. And this is what we have to do in the real world when we design computer networks. Code.org will then have an assessment where they want us to describe two different paths that a message could take going from A to D. So here I could go from A to B to D, A to B to C to D, A to E to C to D, and A to E to C to B to D, which is probably gonna be the worst one. What we just did here is another vocab word. It's called routing, and that's the process of finding a path from sender to receiver. Finally, code.org wants you to write down some vocab words in a journal or some mumbo jumbo like that. Computer device, computer network, paths. You did these in the challenges. These definitions come from the APCSB framework. Routing, you did in the assessments. A computing system is just a computer network where the computers are working together. So it could be something like a supercomputer, but it could also be something like gaming. A gaming network counts as a computing system. Again, computing system, all that means is that they're working together. The last vocab word code.org is going to put into this lesson is bandwidth, which is the maximum amount of data that can be sent in a fixed amount of time, usually in bits per second. So here's a real life example of this. If I take my answer from challenge two, and I assume each connection carries one gigabit per second, the bandwidth into one computing device one is one gigabit per second. And if I take my answer from challenge three, because there are two connections into computing device one, the bandwidth into one the computing device one is two gigabits per second. So that's a real example of bandwidth. Now on to some practice questions. Question one, one of these is false about routing on the internet. So if you get a question that looks kind of like this, you're always on the lookout for fault tolerant redundancy, being sure you know what those terms mean. That's what A and C are about. Both of these are true, so they are not the answer. 
D also has one of these keywords, multiple paths. Multiple paths are what make redundancy and fault tolerance possible. So this statement is true, and again, it is not the answer. So the answer is B, and if you draw it out, you can see if you have three nodes or three computing devices and only two connections, there's no way to make this redundant. Because as you know from selection D, you need multiple paths to make that happen, and you don't have that here. This question is also a little bit of practice with terminology. You'll see the terminology nodes. Those are more or less the same as computing devices. So the answer here is B. All right, question two. You have a computer network here, and you got to see what's the minimum number of connections that you can break or remove before A can't communicate with H. So this is a super common type of problem, at least from everything that I've seen. You want to be pretty familiar with these before you go in. The trick here is you're looking to connect A and H, you can be sure this won't work if you cut off all of A, so that would be three connections. A is also not going to be able to communicate with H if you cut off all of H, so that's two connections. Then to be sure, you need to look for any single points of failure between A and H, but in this case, it's not there. So the answer here is B, two. All right, question three. It's asking me for the maximum number of connections I can break and still have communications between A and H. So it's kind of the opposite of the previous problem. So I'll find the shortest path from A to H, wipe out all the other ones, count them up, and there's my answer, and my answer is nine. Question four, at first glance, it looks a lot like question two. What's the minimum number of connections that must be broken before A and H can't communicate? So I'll look first at cutting off A, and I would need three. Then I'll look at cutting off H for the network, and the answer there would also be three. But I need to check for the paths between A and H. And when I do, I see if I cut off the path between B and I, I can't reach H anymore if I start from A. We see this all the time in the real world. You have one bridge, and there's a big traffic jam on that bridge. And that bridge is your bottleneck to traffic. If that bridge goes down, nothing goes through. This is the same thing. Question five. This is a general question about redundancy and fault tolerance. So one of these is false. The path between A and C is fault tolerant. A is a true statement because I can go from A to C directly or I can go from A to D to C. So because this is true, it's not the answer I'm looking for. B, if E and F fail, A will not be able to communicate with J. So if that happens, A, B, C, D are left on an island. That is true. A is not going to be able to communicate with J. So that's not the answer I'm looking for. C, if I and G fail, A will not be able to communicate with J. If those two fail, A is going to be able to communicate through J, through A, B, E, F, H, J. So that's not true, and that is the answer that I'm looking for. Finally, looking at the last one, E and F can communicate directly, so nobody else needs to know about the communications. So this is a true statement, and that's not the answer I'm looking for. Finally, the last question asks about bandwidth. So each connection carries one gigabit per second. What is the bandwidth into D? Well, into D, I have one, two, three connections. So if I add those all up, it means I have three gigabits per second. In general, more connections will give you more data per second in addition to redundancy. So this part is not going to be in the APCSP exam. The exam only asks you about redundancy, but if you pay for the extra connection, usually you get more bandwidth also. All right, so that's pretty much it. Hope that was useful to you. And if it was, please give this video a like and subscribe to my channel. I'll see you next time.